So with the PS5, in my opinion, kind of halfway through its life cycle, Kotaku released a Kotaku, Kotaku, whatever you want to call it, released an article about six, seven months ago talking about things we're looking for for the PS5 Pro. And I feel like these are things that we're going to be looking for when it comes to any console, not just the PS5 Pro, also the refresh for the Xbox Series X, so on and so forth, right? So let's take a look at this article. Let's see exactly what Kotaku thinks that we, as gamers, are looking for in a refresh console and basically the mid-generation refresh. So let's get into it. Hopefully, my big head, which it's not big enough over here on the screen. There we go. So let's take a look and see exactly what Kotaku's talking about when it says these are the things that the PS5 Pro players want. So this is just going to be the opening of the article. The start. Uh, the story is part of our new Future of Gaming series, a three-site look at gaming's most pioneered technology players and makers. Which I will admit, the. Uh, this part of Future of Gaming, where it's basically a slideshow, is actually pretty cool that Kotaku does. Do I agree 100% with Kotaku? Absolutely not. I think Kotaku is definitely the TMZ of when it comes to gaming. Um, but let's take a look and let's see what they're talking about. And truth be told, when it comes to a lot of these gaming websites, I don't think a lot of this stuff's written by gamers. I think it's written by people that want to be gamers. Um, a new design. Okay, so... Me personally, I don't care what the design is. As long as it's not taking up like an entire desk, um, much like the Series X and the PS5 is actually kind of bulky because I have an original PS5 from when they first came out. Um, now, if it was slimmed down, smaller and more powerful, okay, I could get behind that. But like, I genuinely don't care about design. Maybe I'm just crazy like that. Let's see what it says. A rectangular shape or at least a flat bottom or a, uh, for Christ's sakes, the current generation is the worst console physically interact with ever. Oh, yeah, I 100% agree. Only because, like, you actually have to have the stand underneath it in order for it to stand up. 100% agree. The only reason why I'm, I'm still rocking my PS4 Pro is it's very reasonable. I refuse to rearrange my entire entertainment center to accommodate Sony's poor design choice. Agreed. It, it's... It's big and it's clunky. At least with the Series X, it is a big old mini fridge, which I actually have the Xbox mini fridge next to me on my desk. But it 100%, at least it's ergonomically where you can like basically set it wherever you need to you know, set it. Um, the PS5 Pro is just like, I mean, not the PS5 Pro, but the PS5 design is very clunky. It's just, it's just awkward looking. But genuinely, I don't care as long as it's not making me like rearrange my entire desk just to put it up there. Um, I did buy a shelf so I can put all my consoles underneath. So next to me when I'm streaming, I can hit a button and go from my Switch, PS5, Xbox. Anyways, next one. 4K, 60 FPS across all games. I wish, that, truth be told, I kind of wish that it was 120 or 144 instead of the 60 FPS. Um, now, 60 FPS would be great. Most gamers don't even really see a difference between 30 to 60 um, but when it comes to like cinematic trailers or cinematic games, such as Spider-Man like this, you will potentially notice a difference, especially if it goes up to 60 frames. Um, none of the 30 FPS or performance modes at maybe 60 FPS stuff without DLSS. Dude, the 60, the 4k 60 path tracing without DLSS that would save a lot on the uh, probably the computing powder power of the uh, PlayStation. But I mean, it, it's a simple ask. I can get behind it. Next one: more storage, better cooling, rearrangement of existing peripheral ports, or extra ones. Um, so this right here is something that I kind of I kind of complain about a lot. Is like when it comes to storage, especially when it you know the PlayStation and the Xbox. Um, I genuinely feel like Microsoft and Sony both really push the buck onto the consumer when it comes to storage on the console. So you're you're shelling out what? I think I paid five hundred dollars for my uh, PS5, and with me shelling out that much, I only get one terabyte. Um, games such as Call of Duty, on the other hand, are like we're going to take up a quarter of your storage right there. I think that on a realistic standpoint. <laughs> Most of these should be coming with a two terabyte versus a one terabyte. And with the cost of storage actually coming down compared to where it was even a year ago, 
um, they shouldn't pass that buck onto the consumer and they should actually eat it. Um, from a realistic hardware perspective, more storage, factory diesel, uh, default, I understand you can install a second drive or use external storage. Not the point. I would also prefer better cooling. I agree, better cooling would be nice. It gets hot, and anyone, uh, anyone recalls the situation that happened at Evo this year with people using third-party fight sticks and literally melting connectors. That's pretty bad. I get nervous if you plug in too many things at once for fear of potentially ruining a USB connector. Uh, for a hundred and fifty dollar plus headset, I hundred, I hundred, hundred, hundred percent agree. Um, when it comes down to it, I run everything through my PC audio wise, and I have a mixer that I do everything, so I don't have to worry about my headset or even my dock for my headset being melted. Um, I bought the Sense controller charging station specifically because the system lacks USB ports, uh, partially in the front. Um, the PS Five it has two ports in the front, so I mean. Depending on what all you have connected to the front there, ultimately, I feel like that's not really that big of a, a, a factor, if that makes any amount of sense. Um, next one. Better quality dual sense controllers. So, with that being said, better quality dual sense controllers. I personally, I still have my original dual sense controller. I think it's actually a very comfortable uh, controller myself. I have had no issues with it. Um, I want the dual sense controller to not wear out after a year. I'm about to order a third one because as soon as they get out of warranty, the left stick goes to shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on to my third dual sense controller and thankfully it's worked ever since. Two defective dual sense controllers within a week. Not promising though. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I had a, uh, a scuff dual sense and my scuff dual sense wore out just after the warranty. And um, they were like, yeah, it's going to be a hundred dollars for us to like refurb it. So <laughs> I send it down. I'm still waiting for that to come in more expansive backwards ca uh, compatibility. This one right here, I a hundred percent get on board with this one. I think that um, having more expansive backwards compatible uh, games, it will at the end of the day, make your console that much more better. Uh, Xbox has that whole program where they're trying to, you know, basically, uh, you know, preserve past games. I think Sony, if they were to go and dig into the back catalog, it would be amazing. Um, physically, physical backwards compatibility, I've accepted at this point, is probably won't happen. But it's a home run in terms of brand perception. Slightly annoying having to hook up various old systems to play different things. I've gotten a vast library of PS1, PS2, blah, 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 and I'm a master over the last 30 years. I 100% agree with this man. I am, a, I, let me tell you, when it comes to a physical library, I have a massive physical library actually in my closet. I genuinely love physical games. I think that uh, artwork, the, you know, how they build the case, how they build the, the, the pamphlets, all that stuff. Like, it, it's a lost art form, man. And I love, love classic games. Things you do, uh, you don't need new hardware for. I'd like more games designed specifically for the PS5 and Series X. Long uh, before talks of the pro models for either system, I'm not talking about better looking games, but games that technically could not function on previously gen consoles. Um, the problem, though, is they threw Series X in there. And I say that because you got the Series X and you got a Series S. And with Microsoft, they're not going to allow current gen um, games not to be ran on the Series S, which has held back Microsoft immensely. Uh, now, in terms of the PS5, if they allow the PS5 to basically go in stride, and Series X, mind you, is a more powerful console, I think that they, they, they would be hitting strides. Um, the real answer is that the quality of life ecosystem stuff that Xbox has. Free cloud saves instead of locked behind the PlayStation Plus subscription at Toggle. Free next-gen upgrades to PS5 and PS4 automatically install correct versions depending on the console. I agree with that. Instead of having to, like, buy the game on the PlayStation Store and then being like, okay, which one am I going to install? It's such a pain in the ass. Um, cross saves from PS5 to PS4. Currently, you can upgrade PS4 saves to PS5, but not the other way around. But why would you want to downgrade your save from a PS5 to a PS4? It doesn't make sense to me. 
Um, include PC and PS4 copies with every PS5 game allowing installation on any platform. I agree. I think uh, if if perfect example is if you got a PlayStation Plus subscription and you're buying these games, like why not give it to you on the P PC and the PS4? Only makes sense. Um, save syncs between PC, PS4, and PS5 versions of the game. Agreed. DualSense 4 controller support from PS5. That one I'm kind of on the fence about because, like, I got a couple uh, PS4 controllers, but at the end of the day, I think the PS5 controller is much more comfortable and it's better, in my opinion. Um, Sony needs to go back to patching their existing games to properly support the PS5 with The Last Guardian still capped at 30 FPS. We're going back to, four, you know... 60 FPS, blah, blah, blah. Why has Bloodborne not been updated in any way? Much of Sony's first-party library looks like and runs like crap because it's capped low-resolution frame rates from PS3 and PS4 days. Yeah, that should be that should be a no-brainer to upgrade and like be able to push those last or even two gens ago games into the you know next gen. Or maybe just not a PS5 Pro at all. This is one thing that I feel should be addressed is the mid-generation refresh i think that i keep saying i think i know there's some of y'all out there it's like you need to quit saying i think well this is how i feel um mid-generation upgrades aren't really valid aren't really warranted um why not just push a single console through an entire generation whether it be four five six years right and then drop a next gen instead of investing all that time and energy into a mid-generation refresh just to have people buy that and then want to use that for six years to, to then upgrade to the next generation. Um, if, I mean, how many, how many goddamn Xbox uh, Ones did we have? We had the big old brick, the smaller version, the, series, I mean, the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X. There was just so many... So many different consoles that get released over a lifespan. Just cut it down. Fucking go. Hey, this is this gen. You know, if you want to do a mid-generation, I don't think that it's really warranted, especially if you're already working on the next gen. Allow people to save that money unless you're really trying to milk them. Um, the next one is Orb. I have no idea what it is. There's no video available. This is slide nine. I only left that there just to prove it to you guys. And then, of course, 10, you know, Slide 10 to blank. So let's go full screen. But genuinely, I feel that mid-generation refreshes when it comes to consoles aren't really warranted. Save your money. Wait for the next generation because I got the first generation Xbox Series X and I got the first generation PS5. Now, don't, granted, they didn't hit their stride until about, I'd say about a year ago, so three three years into their life cycle because of, you know, everything that happened, chip shortages, so on and so forth. I don't think a mid-generation is really warranted. Just get these consoles in the hands of people, let them enjoy some games, and they're saying 2026, 2027, we're going to get another, you know, the next generation of consoles, cool. I really want to see what Microsoft's going to do because truth be told, I think the Xbox Series X and Series S is their last generation. I'm just saying and I don't think Sony's going anywhere when it comes to the capabilities of potentially the PS6. Anyways, you guys, don't forget to mash that like button. Comment down below. How do you feel about the PlayStation mid-generation refresh? You think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong on some of my takes? Um, truth be told, I really don't care. I just want to have a conversation with you guys. We're on our way to 8,000. I can't do this without y'all. Let's see. Let's see where we go, guys. Y'all take it easy. Have a great, wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.